Good morning, everybody. Happy Sunday morning, Easter Sunday morning to you. Uh, I'm Danielle Bilek, and I'm here from Second Wind Pilates Plus, recording my self-practice. And so I'm just so happy to be ready to get into my body and recalibrate for the beautiful day ahead on Sunday. So join me if you can, and if you can't do this um, live with me now, you can certainly do this on at another time that it's more convenient to you. Alrighty, so I'm just gonna get going. Enjoying getting into my body, and I hope you do too. So I've just got a couple of things here in case I need them. I may or may not use them, but it's always fun to have a couple of props around. Alrighty then, so here we go. Always starting with breath. Just notice that you do breathe and you are breathing this morning. We're very fortunate for that. And allowing the exhales to help you sink and soften into the earth. So it's a giving in, it's a form of surrender, just allowing the mouth to open almost like a sigh and just <sighs> bringing your awareness to your body and to whatever sensations you feel as you begin to let hold of the muscles in your body and your organs, releasing the organs so there's space for them to just soften into the skeletal structure without you tensing and holding them. So with that comes a sense of weight, right? You're noticing the weight of the mass of your body as it gets pulled into the earth by the downward force of gravity. So gradually you're sinking into the floor, which soon becomes your best friend. So rather than fighting the ground, you surrender into it and it pushes you back as support. So we're gonna take a breath in, it's focusing on nostrils on the inhale. So this is sort of like the drum beat of a song or the bass of a song. It's a constant background. Nostrils on the inhale, sound of the exhale, opening the back of the throat, the jaw, ha, <sighs> on the exhale. Alrighty, so that's always there. I'll remind you sometimes, but remind yourself when in doubt, when you're not feeling grounded, you're not breathing. And we're just gonna use this simple technique. Drawing the air into the lungs, expanding the ribcage as the diaphragm descends and widens three-dimensionally. And on the exhale, just allow it to fall out of you. And as it falls out of you, each body part just sinks and melts into the ground. Inhale. And exhale. So now you're going to start doming the ball of the foot of just underneath the knuckles or ball of the foot from the big toe to the little toe, trying to relax your toes. So you're just doming as if you're living, letting a little ant go underneath there or there's a billow of air. Just waking up the soles of your feet. So it's sort of a doming like this, flat and dome. And you'll feel it lift up the inner arch. And I want you to just take that energy line up into your pelvic floor and right into the base of your pelvis. So you'll feel it up the inner knee and your inner thighs will turn on. So we're gonna keep that dome and we're going to press the big toe ball of the foot, little toe ball of the foot, and the horseshoe-like shape of pad of the heel, keeping the outer edge of the foot on the ground, feeling that dome lift your body up. And then release. Remember we move on exhales and we, we prepare and recuperate on inhales. So we start to breath, inhale, Nostrils, just throw it away, let your body does, do what she wants. Exhale, release into your back space. If you feel like you're melting into the earth, use the melt into the earth of your feet and merge them into the earth, feeling the outer edge, big toe, little toe, ball of the foot and the horseshoe shape of the heel. Inhale deeply. Float your arms up here and reach and you'll feel, see my shoulder blade wrapping around my rib cage. And it sort of allows me to then sequence through the mid spine as the ribs kind of cup forward and the shoulder blades protract and slide around, then you can articulate through your spine because what are we trying to do here? We're trying to find our midline. We're recalibrating, trying to balance our two sides up, balance our front to back, balance our lower to upper, our cross patterns, so that we're as symmetrical as we can be to practice and to reintegrate into our day. Here we go, inhale deeply, exhale dome. 
So you'll feel the balls of the feet even more in the heels. It's kind of like the imprint of a foot on the sandy beach. You know, the billow of the underneath of the foot, the arch actually suspends. And you're going to just take one knee up with that billow, which the outer edge of the foot, which will connect you right into your glute medius on the side of your hip without even having to think. Try not to thrust. So as you adjust the ankles, don't let it come from your hip joint or your knees. It's coming from the ankle proper. And here we go. So these are just simple thigh lifts in this small position so you're not up here. And I call this standing on your own two feet and then taking it for a walk, right? Just taking it for a walk. So your focus is really on, and I'll take, come lower so you can see you can do it lower as well. It's not about height, it's about being on your feet so that everything else is easy. So we're gonna keep the left one in the air and just wake her up, wake him up. Little circles with your foot and dome the left foot. Pull the energy right up the shaft of the calf from the sole of the foot um, on the left leg in this case, through the shaft of the thigh, through the whole half of your body half, of your pelvic half. Excuse me, my hip just went for a little dance. So when your hip hikes like that, just think of taking the sitting bone and pulling it to the wall, okay? And then again, arms, reach your fingertips to the heavens, wrap, feel that cup shape so that you're really concave in the front. And just sort of say, hello, spine. And then you're just going to anchor the sacrum, lift the pelvic floor so the spine is always long, wide in the sitting bones. They're smiling. Sitting bones are smiling. The space between your pelvis is widening and it's going to turn on your lower abs whether you like it or not. If you're like this, you're on your tail. And if you're tucked under because you're super flexible and collapsed in the low back. So you don't want to really have the weight. There's not a big, huge space, but there's no weight in the lower back. The weight is on the back of my skull. Are you breathing? The mid back of my rib cage. Keep exhaling and dropping back in even while you're working, even more so while you're working, and the back of the pelvis. And this is called neutral pelvis, right? Neutral spine, really, all three of them. So this is called Mother Teresa. So for those who have a whole bunch of trouble, um, you can do, use a towel, with two, lie on a towel and use the two corners of a towel. Really, you know, being able to curl up because of the weakness or tightness in your back, weakness in your core, tightness in your back, they're all the same thing, which is part of the whole picture. You're going to use this to help you feel that long spiral circular shape of the spine. So the crown to come up into ab curl, the crown of the head is actually going to the wall behind me and up the back wall behind me. And my elbows are not hanging back. They're reaching and it's really not an elbow, is it? It's the whole scapula complex and upper arm, lower arm. And the direction is wherever it's pointing. So in this case, it's pointing that way. In this case, it's still pointing this way. So you inhale towards the ceiling, exhale, concavity in the front body so the convexity of the back can kick into gear and when the back convexity kicks into gear then you can narrow shorten the muscles that you're trying to strengthen inhale exhale single leg stretch so you breathe in anchor that sacrum exhale the top whole length of the leg away from you so you're not leading with your toes inhale come in and Hug your legs together, the sits bones close, the pelvic floor lifts, and then you wrap your hips around to the center. Exhale, two, three, inhale. Exhale, before you move. Empty, curl up higher, send the leg out, test if you can hold the, the lift of your upper body. Inhale, let your body come down a bit. Exhale, pull the yoga mat towards the wall behind you. Exhale, inhale, and pull so your arm muscles just kick in right away, and inhale. Last time, and pull, lift your pelvic floor, inhale. So the wonder about this, you can feel my voice change, is it makes you work, and I do this sort of for a living, kind of, so, um, and I've done a thousand and one million thousand tons of yoga, single leg stretches in my lifetime and taught it as many times as I've done it. 
So you can see that I can really kick in right away. I don't need to do a hundred of them. I need to turn it on. So what did I, what did we do? We did six, I mean, what, three on each side or something. So now we're going to tap. Boom. So the tendency is drop your foot, drop your foot, drop your foot. So the thighs aren't really moving and you're not challenging. Don't go way out here. I mean, you can, but not this immediate second. Put your fingers down at your sitting bones and push your sitting bones into your fingers. It's the whole back of the slides long towards the floor. Inhale, feeling the whole upper body go back towards the other wall. And you're really tractioning that spine. So you have a long vertical inner axis and you're wrapping the curved shape of your ribs and basin and bowl of your pelvis and you're tractioning the back wall of the spine and you're lifting particularly up the front pelvic floor area. So it's as if you're sort of puckering not to go to the bathroom. The lower ribs will want to stick out. The chin will want to flatten and jam into your chest. So when your chin jams into your chest, what happens? Your rib cage pops. And so it's impossible to get the rib cage wide. So really feel that space. Okay. And inhale, exhale, and reach. And reach. Push with your hands and feet. And reach. Lengthen up. Hold the back of the cat. And one, two, three. Hold on to the tree here I gave you. This is a tree. Keeps you up. Inhale, exhale, hold. Two. Hello, hamstrings. Three. Exhale. Notice. I keep this here while I start to lift this so I can concentrate on one thing at a time. Strong here. Then I start to change once I've got a hold. Two. Three. Inhale. Okay, now I can start to change over because the um, degree of effort lessens as the legs become vertical, right? Two. Three. And one, two, three. Up. One, two, three. Left leg. Up. One, two, three. Up. Right leg. One. You can always tell them what to do. They do respond. And down. Paint can. Shake it out. And shake it out. And allow your knees to fall over. Two arms to the other side, looking away from the screen. Knees go away from the screen, you come towards me. Inhale, and a little spiral. It's like you're unscrewing your spine and just lengthening it out. Nice contralateral, simple pattern. You don't have to take your knees all the way down. You're listening to your body. And this is when you're recuperating. So what are you doing? Nostrils, two, three, exhale, mouth. <sighs> Using the ha breath, the ah breath, the falling out breath. Good keeping your arm legs there. Just double arm circles around the face of your body, the front surface of your body. Is your head going with you so you know what you're doing? So you don't need to be looking at me. You're looking at your hands over the head. Turn the head. So think of putting the ear on the floor and the other ear on the floor and get the head to turn faster than your arms. Your thoracic spine will not rotate if your head is stuck, other way. So imagine the top of the vertebrae of your neck are just an extension of the thoracic spine, which in fact they are. So they will help the stiffer part of our upper body, which is our thoracic spine, move because the thoracic spine has all these 24 vertebrae, I mean rib cage, ribs attached to it, right? So it's stiffer. So this is freer, even though I know we all get super stiff, that's why I said in your neck, put your ear on the floor. I didn't say, I did say turn your head, then I gave you a, 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 de a specific detail of how. Put your ear on the floor. When you tell the nervous system to do something, put your nose, finger on your nose or your nose on your finger, it actually does it. Take the top of the foot and reach it away from you. Okay, so that's called spatial intention. What body part, where in the space, alrighty? Okay, so we're gonna move on now. And um, I think I'm just going to roll like a ball just for the heck of it, just to have some fun, okay? And if this is too hard on your spine, it's a bit bony on mine as well because I have a bony spine, then don't do it. And you're just going to take your legs and take them enough, pull out the flesh of your buttocks, take your feet slightly away, 
and the elbows are just slightly lifted so you get a little, little cool breeze underneath your armpits, okay? So the tendency is to be here and to shove your ribs forward to try and sit up. But in fact, what didn't happen is the, excuse me, the pelvis didn't move. So if you're having trouble sitting, there's all kinds, you can sit on a stair and do this, you can sit on a chair, a stool, you don't have to be on the floor. You're gonna put your back hand on your sacrum with your mid finger pointing into the tail and the heel of your hand on the base of the sacrum. The sacrum is an upside down triangle. Then you're taking your other finger, putting a pubic bone and your palm is shaping against your belly. And I want you to inhale, nostrils, and then get a little sloppy and let your pelvis fall towards the back sits bones so that the sacrum cups into the palm of your hand, kind of like holding the little bummer head of a baby. So you're really shaping your palm around the curved shape of the low back. And you'll notice the pubic bone came up and the tail went down. From there, you're gonna send the sacrum forward into your body and you'll notice and you can encourage the pubis is now going down between your legs and the pelvis rocks into neutral. Don't worry too much about this, but try not to collapse your upper body because that experience will overtake the subtlety of the experience, movement experience of your pelvis, all right? And when you sit with that, change hands. So exhale and ground through the sits bones, soften. It's tiny, the movement, it's not a big drama. Finish your exhale. And on the inhale, the spine lengthens by sending the sacrum forward. So it's not about your rib cage. And exhale, soften, feel the shape. And inhale, sacrum forward. So we're trying to get your deep back muscles to fire. Of course, your hip flexors are probably a bit screening because they'll have a say in this matter to help hold the pelvis up. And now we're shifting. We're gonna hold our hands and that will help the hip underneath our knees, cross the back tendons of the hamstring. You'll feel like you're a little bit, you could rock more on the top middle with the sits bones. And by holding elbows up, your legs, it'll offset the tension in the um, hip flexors so that you can let the back muscles hold you up with a little support of your legs. From here, you're bowing forward in respect and you're allowing the upper part of the T-spine that can get very flat so it becomes a neck action without any movement here. So here we are trying to stand up, trying to sit up. And then she says to me, oh, now you're supposed to let it go. Yeah, I am. Let it go. Allow it to bow. Allow the whole shoulder blade to wrap. This is the position of head cradle. I mean, um, yeah, abdominal curl, head cradle. Except that the head is not collapsed. The head would be more here, right? This would be the energy of the concavity when you're lying on the floor lifting your head and upper body up. Here, because we're going with gravity, it's safe to drop your head. So big breath in and exhale. Slide your hands down to your toes. So listen to those words. Slide your hands down to your toes and that will take you forward. Inhale deeply. Exhale and hang and just let your belly hang like grapes on a vine. Don't worry, be happy. Let your belly hang out, no one sees. Big breath in. Big breath out. Can I hear you? Let the sound happen. <sighs> Again, big breath into the back space of your body. Throw it away, drop the nape of the neck. Can you initiate the tail drop just by lifting up in the pelvic floor, a little curdle, roll gently to the back space, towards the back space without falling off. And then chin and sacrum, sacrum forward, chin means eyes. And come up to sitting and again rolling down your spine collapse notice we're not collapsing backwards we're collapsing into this negative space between our legs then we slide our hands down towards our toes inhale deeply exhale release what can you let go more of what sometimes when there's tension or pain you hold the area or you hold the area beside the painful area to try and protect it and see so. So just listen to your body and notice what you're holding. Let go on the next exhale. Whatever it gives you is good enough. So don't be too demanding. Just breathe and use the breath to make the work happen already. 
So your biggest intention is the breath. The rest will follow. Inhale deeply. Inhale more through the nostrils. Come on. Exhale, let it go. Ha. You can drop your arms in between if you want to open the back of the shoulders a bit more. From here, lift the front pelvic floor. It's super wide right now, so it's hard to pucker it up. Drop, the thighs stay still, heavy on the sitting bones. You're not tense in the thighs. Find that curve, send the sacrum forward, the chin up, and the pubic bone down. So why, and then hold on so your hip flexors don't have to do it for you, and you can really let your back muscles hold that sacrum more erect than typically. All right, so from here, press down in your two feet, pause, and the two paws of your hands, and just float up. If your shoulders are sore, turn your hands out slightly and up. You don't have to stay long. And so it's less about pressing down in your hands than floating up in your body. Alrighty, so we're just going to come off of here. Alrighty, so I don't have any pillow for my head here, so I forgot to put it down, so I'm just going to use my block, but you can do whatever you want. We're going to go on to body half. So you're going to be having a beautiful sense now of the midline of your spine, so now you can explore the fact that you have two sides, left and right. So I've done this in a couple of videos, I think. So this is um, abduction of the hip, not external rotation, so it means that the shin and the foot are more or less level to the floor. And same with the arm. It's not adduction, it's not internal rotation or external, which is very hard to do here. Just up and down. So imagine you're opening your favorite book on Sunday morning to watch, to read, and you open the cover, and the cover is this whole flat surface. So you're mimicking lower and upper body, you're mimicking doing the same thing. So be careful you didn't start in a, in a C curve, okay, or fetus position. You want your spine in line with the back of your head, so it's often really nice to use the back of the mat and line up the back pelvis, the underneath right side of the pelvis, you know, and the head. I'll just show you how that looks, right? So that we're like this. The knees have to come up to the height of your hips. The feet are not behind you towards the sits bone, they're in front, okay? So you've got an L shape in the lower limbs and L shape in the upper. And down. Um, so this is developmentally called body half or, um, homolateral, one-sided. So for example, lizards move this way. They take their lower leg, up, lower quadrant leg, upper quadrant on the same side, and then they pull and they slither along the ground. So you went through this pattern a long time ago, or your baby might be going through it now. Alrighty, so you're gonna feel the abductor lifting the leg. Some of you will feel it across the top back of the shoulder. This is there you go. So from here, you take your toes and fingers and you say, toes that way, fingers that way. Inhale into this position to encourage the lengthening of the body. Elbow to knee. It's not from the back, it's from your hip joint. Inhale, fingers and toes. So the hip abductor, glute med, is holding your leg up which is one of the stability muscles for standing and walking. And inhale, two, three, and exhale. And head and tail are long. Back right through my skull and right down my sacrum are still going straight to each opposite wall. And down. And one more to say hello through the window. And down. Alrighty. I'm not going to do external rotators today because I don't want to keep your video too long for you because I'm sure you have lots to do. So you can see the back of the mat now. This will help you line up. You don't want the pelvis to be forward and you don't want to start here. Do you see how the pelvis is behind me and the upper body is in front of me? So this always without a mirror or a teacher really helps you line up in a simple way. Again, you've got two L-shaped limbs and you're going to lift and you'll notice that one um, side of your hip might be tighter or um, weaker than longer and weaker than the other side. So 
tight is not strong, and a long muscle, as much as you will love doing yoga, to be careful to not overstretch at the expense of the opposite supporting muscle that gets overshortened. So it's all about balance and um, calibration of the body, as I said this at the beginning of the video. So the tendency is for this hip to hike up, as you can probably see. So you're going to take the sit bones, use your fingers, push into that top sit bone, and you're going to have a little scoopy air here. The ribs will want to go forward, so you're going to just quietly, it's not about shoving, you don't shove anything, you just invite the front part of the curved rib to come into the back so that the back is a bit more open, and you're just going to keep that reach of the top sits bone to the wall. So already you'll notice you're working harder, yeah? The, if the low back starts to arch, you want to ground the tail like a dinosaur tail down towards the wall or radar in both directions. And so that you're realizing that this is sort of a whole body core, whole body integration, whole body experience, even though you're isolating two limbs in motion. So that which is stabilizing is not more important than that which is moving, but certainly you could the opposite is that which is moving is never more important than that, that which is supporting. Okay, and finger toes in, 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 L. Try not to have here, huh? Lots of space, collarbones, shoulder blade wide. The arms needs to be so more in front of you in order to um, feel less compressed, then take your arm more in front of you. Elbow knee. In fact, I invite you to do that. So try not, don't even bother bringing your arm that far because many of you will not have the flexibility to move the shoulder blade in a way that's supported by the alignment of the rib cage. Okay, floating that little waistline off by reaching the sits bone to the toe and stretch and stretch and stretch and you'll feel this nice, lovely stretch and it kicks in here, but it opens here. So abduction is not from the waist. It's from the hip joint, right? And you can easily go into this and rest. All righty. So just give yourself a nice stretch. Come back to the puckered midline of your spine. Inner thighs should be adding to the middle of the spine, coming together, adduction, add to your center. Good. All righty. So we're coming onto our hands and knees. We're not gonna go much longer. Rounding like a kitty cat. So the finger, when you put your hands on the floor, often you're cued for the middle, middle finger to go straight forward towards the front of the mat, right? So I'm gonna ask you to turn your hand out slightly. It's a slight spiral in the, in the shoulder blade. Um, so it's not by moving your fingers and keeping your hands straight. Uh, it's going to be turned up so that this space in between the sec second and third finger is facing towards the mat. So you're not going to do that by moving your fingers. You're going to do that by just turning so the fold of the wrist is slightly cocked outward. And it makes it easier on the hand to put your weight on. The other thing is you want to think about your fingertips. It's not like you're doming like this position, but I want you to feel the outer edge, the, the, the distal points of your hand placated on the floor. So this is not easy, <laughs> but so you just remind yourself, who cares if it's not easy, right? It's not impossible either, is it? You just tell the brain to tell the body part what to do. So the knees are underneath your hips. These are the four pillars of strength. One, two, three, four. So this is a collapse. I'd like you to do that, but perhaps a little bit more gently than I did. And then you're going to push through the fingertips, pads of your fingers, and lift up. Your arm is longer than your leg, so you will be on a slant. And then you're going to draw that tail away from you to just do a little bit of a hinge at the hip. And then reach the crown of the head kind of like you're a bear. And you've got a big head that leads the spine, right? Distantly through the skull. And then traction. And you're going to really feel this will, this will tend to happen. So also don't want this. It's a very middle ground. It's not easy to find, but it doesn't have to be perfect. So just feeling that lovely deep fold, try and get the quads to soften so you can get in. The sitting bones widen here. When they widen, you're not going to collapse because you're going to keep the sacrum long. Okay. And the front ribs, if they fall, you're in trouble here. 
Often you think this is the problem, it's not. It's the position of the thoracolumbar junction, which is where the thoracic spine meets the lumbar spine. Okay, so this is that kind of rocking thing that babies do as they develop before they start crawling. Okay, so just find that freedom of your torso moving on your limbs. You're gonna walk your hands forward, turn your toes under and run, run, run. And down and hinge. Front ribs, keep your front ribs light, keep your front ribs light. And in, tail goes away. And then it's like crown of the head and feet. Reach, hold, two, three, one. Hinge, soften your quads. Wide sitting bones, hollowing out the front body. Don't let the bony structure collapse. Lots of space between your thigh, front hip bone. I call that the tiger's eye. He's sleeping now and you're gonna open him up and you're gonna have a sense of decorum here. And lift your pelvic floor, start the pucker, push your feet, reach your head, and before you know it, you're up. Try not to collapse. I'd rather see you way too high than low. Two more times. And push. Now what happens to help you, inner thighs are super important here. Why are they super important? They trigger into the deep abdominal muscles of the pelvis. They pucker and lift up your pelvic floor. Okay, so you're solid. When you're in a plank position in whatever system you're learning, never sit in your tendons. Always hold the tendons of your ankle. They're part of the strength of your core, believe it or not. And up, 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 up. You've got stilettos on, so you're on the balls of the feet, the heels are high. And you're gonna square off your ankle. <sighs> Hollow the front body, reach down. Inhale by lifting the pelvis up. Two, three, lift the pelvis, and exhale, square off the inner and outer heel. And reach it down and up. Two, three, and down. <sighs> Notice my head. <sighs> this tendency is lovely, but this is not the most functional position of your arms to your back. It's fine because it's a lovely stretch, but this is about strength right now. So you can't collapse. And then you're gonna come down, but don't. So you're really lifted, hug. And if you don't have a block, bring your um, feet together. Come on, little block. And hug your legs, hug your sitting bones. You're gonna feel the zip all the way up front and back, okay? Puckering the midline of your body. So all you're trying to learn is, how can I keep the lightness of my body when I'm doing push-ups, when I'm doing downward dog? How do I support so I'm lifting out of my hands so that your hands and wrists don't hurt, right? They may feel some compression especially as we get older. It's part of the picture. Okay, can we do this? Exhale, really hold on and help yourself sit up. Shake out the hip bones, crossing your ankles. Inhale up. I know this may be very hard for you. There's a block over here you can use or if you have something at home. And side bending. Listen to the ceiling with your top ear that will open up the length of your neck on both sides rather than collapsing into your neck on the shoulder side, okay? Come, feel, see, feel, see, feel your spine. Listen to the ceiling. Oh yeah, who's up there? And inhale up and again. Arm is not behind you, in fact, a little bit forward for most of you, and you've got a beautiful side body stretch. Again, recalibrating, how does this make me feel? Top of the ear to the sky, so that the head is light. And then you're gonna put your hand on your right knee, and your other hand, not behind you, but just between your knee and your hip. So it's slightly behind you to side. Instead of front side, mid side, back side. Look. Inhale, lift up, put weight on the back hand. Stretch, put your hand on the ground in front of your knee. Turn and lift, you won't go very far. And put some weight so you don't come off your hip. So you can push this hand into the ground to keep you on your hip and lift up. And again, one, 
two, three. What are we doing? Eye hand coordination. Two, three. Beautiful diagonal in the body. Beautiful rotation. Wonderful for golfers. Wonderful for cyclists who are always in the sagittal plane and need to get out of it. And proudly, this reminds me of Martha Graham technique in modern dance. So this hand is side back. Half of the technique is done on the floor sitting. You'd love it. It's terribly challenging. I did it for years. And over and inhale up. Wonderfully challenging. I correct myself. And if you add your arm a little longer, you're going to really get and stay there and just whoa, good. And center. And sacrum softens. Pubic bone floats. Bow the head and neck like we did earlier and lift the head to look at me and send the sacrum forward and hold on with your knees to help. Again, bow the head, sacrum softens back, rib cage moves forward, opening the space between the lower back ribs and front back, uh, top of the crest of the hip and up. And then head goes down, head goes center, head goes right, inhale up, head goes down and down and down, inhale up, exhale down. You know what? If you're not comfortable, just take your legs here. And send the legs out. Inhale deeply. And draw the tail down behind you and come towards me. Happy Easter, everybody. I hope you have a wonderful day. I know for many this is a non-fortunate day and a challenge. Some of you may just have been gotten back from work on the front lines, worried about your family, all kinds of very legitimate reasons. So within that, I hope this gives you a little bit of peace. Okay. Namaste. See you again soon. Bye-bye. Happy Easter.